So it seems like the ladies made a list of all the restaurants they refused to go to on a first date, right? And I'm going to let you know this right now. We don't care. Let me tell you. (laughs) (laughs) I love gay people and black people. And Asian people. And Native American people. And Pacific Middle Islanders. Eastern. Well, Pacific Islanders. I love Middle Eastern people. And Indian this is people. no particular order. No, I rank. I rank. I okay. love black people more than anybody else. What's second? Ah, that's tougher to say, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> that's tougher to say, isn't it? You know what? Your mouth kind of reminds me of like a person from Whoville. That's because fine. you like lip is not there. Well, I can't like, help that. No, no, you can't. It's just like Whoville. Body shaming's fine until it's all about the weight, right? Goodness. Here come the comments. <sighs> Gotcha. Gotcha. Hey, if you're going to decide to jump into a roast battle, then you better be prepared to get roasted. Now, it does turn out that they're actually pretty good friends, and she comes on to the podcast from time to time, and they kind of just go back and forth with this type of banter with one another. Nonetheless, that does not take away from the fact that in this round, he definitely scored the point. If men say they want to talk about men's rights, how many women are willing to hear that? Zero. So can we conclude that women don't care about men's feelings? Uh, <laughs> yeah. I think we've been hearing it forever. What do you mean? I mean, it's all up, the rights all, are all about men. They feel like they've been stepped on and what they got going on has been stepped on, that who cares about men's rights, right? So. so can we conclude that women don't care about men's feelings? No, they don't. They don't. Uh, women do not care about men's feelings. Uh, uh, women are very much don't. They're more, much more savage than men. They'll actually destroy a man's emotion and his feelings uh, without even feeling any type of sorrow for him whatsoever. So, no, they don't care about our emotions. When men complain about their feelings, not too many people take them seriously. And when women complain about their feelings, people do. So I think that's why there's more feminists than men in this. <laughs> How much money do you think your partner has to make? Maybe like near 100000 I don't know. Probably like six figures. I would love like a good 500 Let's get one thing straight. Crack is cheap. The economy is kind of ass right now, so I would hope it's a livable wage. I guess like 80 k I feel like that's like something that people aspire to. I like this one. Okay. I'm looking for a billionaire. Like seriously? Yes, yeah, seriously. You know how many of those are in the world, right? There are 116 in New York or something, so that's where I'm heading. Now, reality can be whatever I want. You know, it's so interesting when uh, dudes uh, be on Instagram and they see a, a really attractive woman out of a relationship and they be like, damn, how, how is she single? Uh, her dude messed up. Uh, I, I would have never let her go. Uh, bad bitches get annoying. Y- 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 y'all don't know what that man was going through. Y'all don't. Just because she bad as bad don't mean that she ain't got daddy issues, mommy issues, attachment issues, avoiding issues, and communication issues, and she clingy as Like, y'all hold these women so high on this pedestal, y'all forget, like, these are actually regular ass b- They just bad! <laughs> you gonna get a bad bitch and be like, wow, she's so regular. And her coochie, regular. Do not let these really attractive women fool you, bro. They just like all these other women. Severe mental health issues. They just bad. Hey, listen, he's 100% correct. And some of y'all need to hear this from your Uncle Charles. Because the earlier you hear this in life, the better off you're going to be. Too many times, especially when you're a young dude who don't know any better, when he get a woman who he finds so attractive, he think he won. He think he pretty much is set. Like, oh, I got me a bad chick. Everything is good now. I know I'm winning because she, she bad. I'm super attracted to her. It's going to be amazing. Without really understanding that, her look should be the bare minimum requirement that you require for her to even to get your time and attention. But when you young, dumb, and full of cum, that's all you end up thinking about. There's good guys out there, which, by the way, is another thing that my pregnancy changed because I had a boy. I was very much a man hater (laughs) before Mm -hmm. I had my son. And now I'm like, I'm still very much a girl's girl, but I'm more of like an ally of all people versus just women now because I look at my son and how pure and innocent he is. And I'm like, there's a little Milo and all these men out there. Like they have a mom that thinks about them the way that I think about my son. Yeah, And that's really helped me see that. Like humanize them a little mm. bit. Hey, it's 
crazy the fact that it took her having a son for her to realize that you know something men are human beings too but i guess when you put yourself in an environment where you allow yourself to be objectified by men on a daily it's pretty easy to play victim but she chose to chase that fast and easy money while she was still young and never thought it was going to catch up with her but like in any and every case it always does and this is just another example of it so what you were saying can you gonna do it <laughs> what you gonna do not having my children out in the wedlock. Okay. Gonna be an honorable woman. Okay. <laughs> and my children. Yes. Is not gonna be half nothing. Okay. Same father. Okay. Same mother. Okay. No different baby daddies. Okay. Straight ghetto. Okay. That's ghetto. Mm -hmm. They have all them baby daddies. Real ghetto. So I'm ghetto. Very much so. <laughs> <laughs> that was ghetto. Hot mess. Oh my god. Hot so you're gonna be better than me? Period. Happily married. Period. Period. Breaking generational curses, huh? Hey, listen. Much respect to the single mother for instilling these kind of morals, values, principles, and beliefs into her daughter in such an early age. That's the only way you're really going to change the next generation in order to stop this vicious cycle of single motherhood. And the fact that her as a single mother understands that in order for her daughter to actually have a better chance at having a better life than she had she doesn't want her to make the same mistakes that she did and not marrying before she carries now only if more single moms were to have this kind of mentality rather than embracing the struggle that comes along with single motherhood as if it's some type of badge of honor that they should wear proudly just because they were able to find some way to survive without a man doesn't mean the job was meant to be done without a man. Is, if I said my pronoun was hottest man alive, if, they, if that was my genuine pronoun, would you feel obliged to call me that every day? Hey, mm -hmm. hottest man alive. No, you no. wouldn't, would you? No. So, no. in other I, words, I, I it all depends who decides and, what they want to be and called. And isn't that what we're discussing? The fact that I don't have to do that, but so that's okay. So why do we have to call, okay. so we have to call Sam Smith there? Because we're respecting their so why don't you respect choice. Me? That's my choice. When when do I have on, to call you? When do I have to call you? I want to be called hottest man alive. Hottest man alive. Yes, I, all, all the time. That is my choice, <laughs> and I demand you respect it. Uh, I, I'm By the way, I'm I can now hot. demand you call me. It's my pronouns. Hottest man alive, okay, but you don't want part, to because you think that's ridiculous. Serious part of this. But you'll call a single person they and that. You make it gender neutral to avoid discrimination. Not me. Not and me. when the five best artist nominations actually turn out to be men that year, yeah. that's discrimination yeah. and against that, women. But no one was surprised. What about going outcome? back to having best women and best men, which was what old Sam Smith they, they, wanted yeah. to stop? They right? They wanted it to stop. They wanted non-binary to get the same part of the pie as men and women. And guess what? Now he wants more women to be nominated. It's exhausting. But, and it's true. It's exhausting. It's true because Somebody's you... gay one minute, the non-binary the next, they want women removed from award ceremonies, they want gender-neutral awards, and then when it turns out that no women get nominated, that becomes sexism, then he, then they wants to have Take more women in. He's obviously list. confused. I, I, I'm not sure he would agree with you as he finally him well, confused. Well, he wouldn't, obviously. He, he, what do you he, mean he? Yeah, them, what do you mean they? they. Hey, Paula, she. Paula, hang on. You just misgendered Sam Smith. I, I did, and I apologise. Can you please apologise to they? I, I apologise. Look into the camera. I apologise. I mean. Listen, I'm all for... Listen, I don't think there's anything wrong with change. I don't think everything from the past necessarily is good for the present and is going to work in the future. But when the very thing that you're trying to change hinges on the logic that you use that you can't even keep up with because it's just too confusing to the point where you can't even keep track of it, maybe that's something we should just leave alone. Oh, real shit, don't try to, don't try to, nah. You want to tell the world how you such a great uncle? Tell them how you had a, you, you lied about making, right. you, li sure you lied about making that fake ass, no, that fake ass AAU team. It wasn't no fake ass AAU Yes, you did, oh. No, it wasn't. No, it wasn't. That, that shit wasn't no real AAU. Yes, it was. We didn't even play real teams. We played, yes, you, you put us in a, <laughs> you, yes, you, did. you put us in yes, a juvenile. No, I did you remember we played against the juvenile detention? God damn right. We was 10 years, I was 10 years old, he was four. That's Don't all even right. Sorry, <laughs> Four. That was the scared straight program, motherfucker. <laughs> y'all just happened to play him in basketball. <laughs> Fuck you, y'all talking about. That was the scared straight program. <laughs> what you talking about? You know? <laughs> How would you have us <laughs> against them? <laughs> they were like 15. Oh. I thought y'all was going to turn out to be me at that time. I didn't know what to do. So I scared you straight early. How the f*** you think?
can't take the hat for you even be playing basketball. I don't want you to be me. That's all I'm saying. Hey, Uncle Phil, he had to do what he had to do to make sure them boys turn out right. I'm going to go ahead and leave a link down in the description, guys. I think these guys are hilarious. They got a YouTube channel. Make sure you go check them out. Anyway, guys, as always, questions, comments, thoughts, and your feedback. Go ahead and drop it down below. Appreciate when you join the conversation. Let me know what you think. Don't forget, you can support this channel by hitting that like and subscribe button. And as always, until next time.